guys, I'm Layla. So today we have something really fun and special to share with you. We have a showcase for Borgar the Elder, thanks to Mullet, you see up top there, who is kind enough to let us do this showcase since I personally do not have the champ myself. Now, what's really fun about Borgar is he has a very unique kit when it comes to resistance and speed which makes us think that there might possibly be some kind of maybe like new resistance type meta going on in the future. We don't really know what the plans are for Plarian, but let's go check them out. All right, so here we are, Borgar the Elder, and he does look really cool, right? He does have a pretty unique cool design. I like what they did with his beard. He's got this, this face mask going on. It kind of reminds me of something like Man in the Iron Mask. You guys remember that? Man in the Iron Mask? So he does look pretty neat and it looks like he's got a nice little spell book behind him. Now, Mullet has him built out in a shield set and immortal is what we're gonna see here. Shield set and immortal. And we're gonna take a look at his stats. 80,000 HP. So he's got him built really, really beefy as well as 2,500 defense. His speed's at 245, low crit, low accuracy. And look at his resistance. He's at 489. Fantastic amount of resistance, for sure. So now we're gonna take a look at his skills for those of you that are not familiar with him. Like I had just mentioned, he has a very unique kit. He brings something very new and something very different to the table. So Antique Staff is he has a chance of placing increased defense on the alley with the lowest HP. Not on himself though. And has a chance instead of this attack as a crit which realistically we're probably not too worried about that. We're looking at some of his other abilities more so. Is Souls of Old Stone removes a random debuff from all allies, not one, but all of them, and places a shield on allies for two turns. And you see this is a three turn cooldown, okay? Rune of Energy. Now this is what's nice and unique along with his passive, is Rune of Energy is an increased resistance and increased speed for two turns and it's a four turn cooldown. Now, like I said, he's the first, he's kind of the first champ that has this. And I believe he's the only dwarf with an increased speed, if I remember correctly. I know we've looked at this before. I'm pretty sure he's the only dwarf that has this increased speed buff. So this can be really useful. Like we're talking about dwarf faction war in general as well too. So this is nice and unique. And his passive is called Borogar's Blazon. Allies receive 10% less damage from champions whose resistance is lower than or equal to theirs. And this pairs very nicely with this rune of energy because you're doing a 50% increase resistance buff on your champions. So this does pair very nicely. And his aura is also increasing ally resistance in all battles by 50. So this guy is pretty much like a resistance beast is what we're talking about. And I love how mullet pretty much built him out to have high resistance like we see here. He's at 489 resistance. Now for masteries, this is how we have him built out. So you're gonna see that he's built out in the defense and the support trees, which makes a lot of sense. With his tier six being unshakable, again, pretty much going down resistance, trying to get as much resistance as possible on this guy, because that's what we're gonna see is that's where the support comes from. Okay, so we have some areas of the game that we could play around with him. We have Spider, we have Dragon, we have the Eternal Dragon that is the final boss on Doom Tower, both normal and hard, and also in Arena. So let's go test him out in some content. All right, so first up, we're gonna head into Spider 24. Now the team that is set up in Spider 24 is Tyrants. We have Miscreated Monster, and we also have Borgar the Elder. Now, the way that this is set up is these three are the primaries with two spots for food. So this does let us add two food champions as well. So we're gonna toss in, let's toss in some more dwarves since we're bringing in a dwarf here. But the idea being we're gonna have burns, shields, and resistance is what we have here, okay? So Tyre has created a monster, Borgar the Elder, two pieces of food, and we are going to be in Spider 24. Oh, so look at that again, new, new buff. Do you guys see that? I actually really like that. That's pretty cool. You see, you see the body there and it looks like that there's like this aura, this aura above them. It looks really cool. I love seeing just the new things that they add into the game, whether it's like the new buffs, the new debuffs. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Not even phased, but I like that. 
So I'm assuming this should just be auto, that we really shouldn't have to do any presets or anything. And it's fine if the food drops, we expect that, right? Yeah, once the food is dead. Yeah, this is what's fun is I know a lot of times people are asking for some spider teams that you could bring food in. And so this looks like one way that you can just kind of have a fun spider team and bring in some food. Yeah, and again, there should be no presets. It just, just run as is. And again, there's the cool new buff. I like that, uh, what do you call it, icon? I like that icon for it. That looks neat. Let's move him so you can see him a little bit. And look at that, so much resistance that the poisons aren't landing. Love that. And there we go. There we go. So again, it's not, it's not fast, but you can bring food in there with you as well too. So I guess that's where you kind of like weigh the options is if you're looking for a team that's fun that you could bring in some food and level up some food champs along the way, here's a team that can do that. And like I said too, it's, you know, this was like almost two minutes, not quick, but you kind of weigh out the options on that, you know? And so he was able to resist the poison debuffs, which was great. I think one landed on the end, but other than that, exactly. That's the thing too, is realistically with food, the timing's not bad at all. It's really not. So this is just like one little fun thing to do with him and Spider. Next up, we have Dragon 25. So Mullet has this team put together for Dragon 25, where he has a Borgar the Elder, Seer, Prince Kaimar, Ghostborn, and Armager. Now for this, you are gonna see that there's some team presets. So for this, let's take a look at the presets, okay? So Borgar the Elder, for one, we have his Rune of Energy, which is the increased resistance and increased speed is set for one. For Seer, of course, we have her Karma Burn. Now what's really nice is, again, his buffs do set up Seer very nicely. Prince Kaimar, we have Phantom Fire, Poison, right? So we have that set as his opener default. Ghostborn, Petrify, with the heal reduction, that is shut off, so we're not using that at all. And then for Armager, later rest we have as his first choice, okay? So that's how the presets are set up, nice and easy. And let's run this. So we said this is a Dragon 25. Should be Speed Team, I think you said? There we go. Flowing through the waves nice and quickly. Very nice. So we're still sub a minute here. Very good, and as you see, they really have no problems at all. Yeah, so it should be about a minute, right? There we go, a minute. You can see that Mullet's fastest time was 43 seconds. This was about a minute. Your armature never hits that hard. <laughs> yeah, guys, I mean, it comes down to, it does come down to gear as well too, right? It's not about the champs. We talk about this all the time. It's not about the champs, it's about the gear. The gear is really critical. I mean, look at that. So Seer did 3.7 mil, Armager did two mil. And what, yes, yeah, so this was a fun team. This ended up being a minute on Dragon 25. Now I like, I know for myself, I have these four. I do not have Borogar 
But I got these guys, right? I have Ghostborn, I got Kaimar, we got Armager, and we have Seer. So this ends up being Dragon 25 on one of his speed teams. All right, next up we're in Doom Tower. So you're gonna see that we're in Hard Doom Tower, the final boss, the Eternal Dragon. And this is full auto. The team that we have here, again, Borgar, we have him in lead for the resistance. We have Drexthar, Brogni, Valkyrie, and Krisk. And this is full auto. So let's run. Again, we know how critical resistance is, especially in Doom Tower. And it seems like the increased resistance is going to be so much more useful in the future. Like, I, I'm really curious what Plarium is planning. Considering, like, this update, it seems like we're seeing a lot of this increased resistance, decreased resistance kind of debuff. Very different than what we've seen before. And yeah, I know that there's probably some comments about that. Brogni, that's a plus four. I did see that, guys. I did see that. That, that spicy plus four Brogni. All right, so Mullet said that, what we'll also do too is we'll run the same boss on Doom Tower normal. He said that team is a little bit more free to play. I mean, obviously this one, not so much with like, you know, the plus four Brogni, the Valk and Krisk, of course. But he did say the normal one is much more free to play. So we'll run that one after the hard. This usually people want to see the hard one first because they figure if you can beat the hard, you can beat the normal. And just so many buffs on all of them. So much resistance. Yeah, and I know I see some points in the channel saying at the same time it's the last boss on hard. You don't reach that on auto very easily. Exactly. Krisky baby. Krisky baby, what's happening to you, bro? It's all right, guys. They're going to be fine. They're going to be fine. So it's but a flesh wound. You see just so much resistance on them too, which is pretty great. And so I like that they did that with Borogar, is that you see like he's pretty much like a, a resistance champ, right? His aura is resistance, not to mention he increases resistance and increases speed as well too. So he is built with a good amount of resistance, as I showed you guys. It was like, what, 483 or something like that? Don't mind the uh, the lying turtle there. He's fine. He's just taking a nap. He's fine, guys. Krisk is just tired from, you know, carrying things. He carries teams all the time. He's just tired. He's just resting. He's just napping. No big deal, guys. No big deal. And so they'll clear it. <laughs> I'm seeing my, uh, so we're, we're, we're recording this live on Twitch for anybody watching on YouTube. And I see Twitch chat referring to Chris as a squished cockroach. So what I will do is I'll make sure I add in the Chris the cockroach clip. So you guys know what we're talking about. For those of you that are uncertain what that is, that's a clip from a video Ash and I did. <laughs> I had a new time viewer, somebody that never played Rage to open my channel. And I forgot what dungeon I was running, or it might even been Arena, because Chris is my Arena team. And the viewer asked, who's that cockroach on the screen? And my <laughs> chat was like, I am disgusting. What? <laughs> and, and so they were like, well, the, the thing on the right, that cockroach. And of course, Chat got offended because they're like, oh, that's Chris. How dare you? <laughs> and there we go. Final boss. Oh, that was actually the best time. Look at that. Nice. New best time. Drax at 2.5 mil. Now again, Borgar, not much, you know, not much damage done here which is fine. I mean, he's not supposed to be right. He's support. Yeah, that was a great run. Congratulations. That was a new best time as well too on the final boss, which again, which again, 
is really, really difficult to do considering this is the hard Doom Tower final boss. So what we'll do is let's go to the normal one, which Mullet said is a much more free to play team. Easier team, ah, there we go. Yep, this is much probably easier and much more attainable, right? So this is gonna be the normal final boss Eternal Dragon. Different team, much easier. So we got Basher, Borogar, Drax, Godseeker Neri, and Sill of the Drakes. Much more, a bit more easily attainable team than we had seen on the hard Doom Tower. Ally HP in battles by 25%. So this also will be auto. So we're gonna let them run. Look at that, they cleared the first wave very easily. And again, this is normal. So for the gear and the teams he has, this this shouldn't be a problem. Wonder if we can get another new best time. We just got new best time on hard. Another new best time. Oh, I knew there'd be comments about Mullet's three Hegemons. <laughs> Especially after the uh, the plus four Brogni. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, these guys don't look like they're in trouble at all. They should be able to clear this just fine. Love seeing a Godseeker too. For those of you guys that do hang out with me on Twitch, you're gonna know I just got a Godseeker myself and just started building her. So we're working on our masteries right now. We just got her geared and we should be able to take her into some faction wars and try some content with her. So I'm excited about that. She's a pretty cool champ. Yeah, no problems here. They'll be able to clear this fine. And I gotta say, it's fun seeing some champs like Basher in some comps like this, right? It's always fun seeing that because you don't usually see that. Yeah, and you see that they're they're pretty much not in trouble at all. And Godseeker's actually hitting pretty hard for herself too. That's impressive to see. When you see some support champs that can hit pretty decent. All right. Very nice. But it, like I said, it is always fun to having some of these auto comps that you don't need to worry about, which, you know, comes in time with getting the champs, but also more importantly, getting the gear. Like that's the critical parts as well, too. We have the block active skills on Aniri, but that's not a problem. They're fine. No worries. And there we go. So the best time on this was two. This one took three, but here we are. So in this one, Drex did about a mil. Look at that. Godseeker and Syl doing about half a mil damage themselves. I mean, I gotta say that, that kind of becomes impressive when you start looking at some support champs like that. But there we go. So we end up seeing Borogar in both, both Eternal Dragon, you know, the final stages on Doom Tower. We have both normal and we have hard as well too. All right, so we do also have him for arena. So let's go check out some arena. All right, so you're gonna see that right now, mullet we do have in gold four. All right guys, so this is the team that we have running is we have Duchess, Helior, Borgar, and Krisk. And there is some presets, so we can take a look at the presets on this as well too. 
So for Duchess, we have Respectful Rebirth on one, which is the Valen, the Continuous Heal. For Borgar, we have Rune of Energy again. It's the increased resistance and increased speed. For Heliar, we have Harsh Light, which is transfer all debuffs from allies to target enemies and attack that enemy with the default skill. Also converts this champion's resistance into additional accuracy, which should be a lot. And then Krisk. Krisk is Krisk, right? There we go. Something nice and fun and different. And yeah, they clearly they're not in any trouble whatsoever. <laughs> Just waiting on that skull crown now. Clearly not in any trouble whatsoever. There, and just wait for her to kind of take some turns. There we go. And done. Okay. So that was up against this team as well. All right, guys. So we tested out Borgar in, let's see, Spider. We did Dragon. We did Hard and Normal Doom Tower. We did Arena. But of course, per Twitch chat's request, there's one very, very important area that they still want to see him tested in. Campaign farming. All right. So Twitch chat... <laughs> They got this thing about watching champs be campaign farmers. So we're gonna toss him into 12-3 Brutal. We're just gonna let him, we're gonna let him run and let him do his thing. Ooh, look at the animations too. Like I actually didn't notice, look at that. It's actually kind of cool. It's like pillars come up from the ground when he attacks. I didn't notice that when he was in, he was doing the other content. That is cool. Like that's very like MMO-like, right? I like that. That's cool, man. I like it. Look at that. Yeah, I really like that animation. That's great. Love it. That was that's some creativity for sure. I like it. What do you guys think? Twitch chats and press. They like it. Yeah, they're kind of like energy pillars, right? Like if you look at the design, they look like energy pillars. That was really, really neat. Let's run that once more. Let's run that once more. Yeah, they're like these really cool like energy pillar things like you would see in like an MMO or something. Really digging that. I mean, you got to hand it to Plarium, right? Their character design, animations, all this stuff is so good. It's so very good. Wow. Love it. Love, love, love it. Look at that. Love it. That is fun. What are some of your other favorite champs that have really cool animations? Yeah, I'm liking the animation as well too, guys. It's really neat. They did a good job with him. They really, really did. All right, guys, leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you think. I know that we ran Borgar in a bunch of different content. And this is what's fun too with running them as campaign champions just for fun is you actually get a chance to see their animations. Because again, like I said, there's many things that Plarium, you know, does really well as far as character design, but the animations are really, really cool. Leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you think. And let me know what you think of Borgar. Do you have him? Have you tested him out? Are you excited to get him? Are you going to try him? Let me know what you guys think. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, check out some more videos up here in the playlist on the top right.